out of the grave. Macabre practice of rubbing tombs, not for the purpose of spoiling the dead or their gold or jewels, but the intent of dragging the mouldering corpses from their cold, clammy resting places, a given civilized society cause for concern from earliest times. Man's feeble grasp of a mentality has always spurned him to resurrect safe, secure resting places for his earthly remains. A lowly peasant covered the bones and his loathed ones with slab, stone slab, while the noble and wealthy erected vast mausoleums in huge blocks of granite and secret practices were supposed to protect for all time the cadavers that have reposed therein. What makes a living being disturbed and sleep for the dead? Many abnormal, crooked minds are turned to this sinister activity to this day. We do not know what induces this horrible infinity, the dry corpses of departed persons. Probably one of the strangest cases occurred in Europe some years ago when it was the practice of medical students to deter their bodies for the purposes of study. But this time, they were not guilty. But the outraged relatives of the dead persons whose graves have been desiccated stormed the police platform at Theresa's, Switzerland, and revealed to the astonished authorities that 11 corpses were missing from the age-old graveyard so they a fierce battle being menacing a law. Naturally, the police declared, our bodies could have been stolen only by medical students. They declared their intentions by dealing severely. The first medical student caught, despite vigorous protestations, the school facility. For almost a month, the feud continued. It wasn't a young medical student who wouldn't believe, didn't believe he's continually been watched. The graveyard police doubled their watches. Said all men are trapped for the ghoul, but not until three months had passed they would see the surprise and the lights. It was a full moon that night. It was one of those nights when the air is warm and fragrant, just the kind of night to induce someone, some easy concurrently. But a guard in his sign portion of the graveyard saw a fragile, willowy young girl making her way among the graves, a wicker basket in her hand. He stared in stupefaction. Was he day dreaming? Was he seeing a ghost? He could not be sure. So he dreamed. So taking a type of grip of his gun, he drew back the shadows of protecting tree while he studied the situation. The guard took his breath and watched intently. The eternal visitor drew a short handled spade from the wicker basket. With a burst of fury, she attacked the grave, the metal face of a spade, ringing as it struck pebbles and small stones. Curiously, the guard moved towards the apparition, carefully and silently, picking his steps through the dew damp grass. Fearing to take a shot, least his body injured the fragile figure, he crept closer and closer to the digging gale, who did not make seem aware of his presence, finally he made a jump and grabbed her. Flesh and blood, he muttered. She's real, she's, he stared. Why, he knew this girl. She was a local girl called Martha Missenberg. Suddenly the girl screamed in terror. Where am I? She cried out. The scream brought the other guards to the run. The run. They gathered around and soon agreed on a solution. They cleared up the mystery. Sleep morning, they said. But that was not all. When the girl was brought to the police station, the chief reminded her. Remember her only too well. Three times she had come to the forest, claiming guilt or robbing of the graves. He had told them about, that when she awakened in the morning, he found bones in her room. Fishers had laughed, claiming he must have raided her own icebox. They didn't laugh now. A grip to Martha's home disclosed the eleven missing corpses, and each time the astonished authorities discovered the bodies, it's disinterred and transported to the girl's home on nights when the moon was full. Tiny himself stepped forward. But Science himself stepped forward in Martha's behalf. A day following her arrest, an explanation based on long research, proved that sleepwalkers and light and light dreamers 
Just, just do not remember anything about that axe. Perhaps the embarrassment, the position, having had a confessed gall in their grasp, they only laughed at her. May it has something to do with the authorities leniency in extraordinating the girl. At any rate, the celebration stopped, and the mother returned to a normal routine of life. For otherwise, she was clean, fully clean record. Well, was well light in the village. Nevertheless, on the nights when the moon was full, the branches of the willows in the graveyard sighed. In the breeze, it gave voice, the slumbering dead below. Ean eyes kept guard on Martha's house to see. She did not yield again. Her implying, reading revenues with the decaying remains, long dead, their dank chambers of eternity. Martha's actions, scientists stated, was spurned by some deep-seated mental or emotional disorder, which she always threw off when awake. Going about her daily chore was completely unaware that she had been guilty of any abnormal behaviour the night before. But what was the base of this foul urge? What made this otherwise dainty young girl rise from a cot in the dead of night and make her way like a fugitive thing to the gloomy shadows of of the local cemetery. They had one of the purifying corpses and the graves and carried the greasy burden of a frail shoulders back to the warmth of their own home. Could it be some of us cannot suppress the remembrance of another world whence we came and seek the commune where by means to close contact with those who come back to it? Psychic, psychiatrists have not come up with a solution yet. It means one of the most startling puzzles of human behaviour.